Hello, my name is Lily Beltran and I am a data science master's student at Columbia University. And today we will be learning about a machine learning paradigm known as supervised machine learning. We will be reviewing two algorithms that fall under this technique known as linear and logistic regression. First, recall that decision trees are typically used for classification, but could also be used for regression via CART learning, which stands for classification and regression tree in machine learning. Today, we will be reviewing parametric learning where we assume a known function and we are looking to find its parameters. We will also consider two general cases today. For regression, we are learning a set of weights, also known as coefficients, that are combined with feature values via dot product. Then we fit a linear function to match the data between classes. For classification, a classification model is given one or more inputs and will try to predict the value of one or more outcome via a nonlinear function. We will review the basics of linear regression. First, recall that in a linear regression problem, our task is to find values for the weights, also known as W as seen here, in order to minimize the difference between Y hat and Y, which is the predicted outcome and the expected outcome respectively. So to calculate the predicted Y hat value, we add an extra term W, also called a bias which is basically the intercept if you think of the slope-intercept equation of a line. Linear regression tries to minimize squared error, which is calculated by finding weights that minimize the error with inputs such as x, where this stands for independent variables or features, w, where the stands for model weights or coefficients, and y, which is the dependent variable or the target variable. So root mean squared error here, also known as RMSE, is a commonly used measure of the difference between values predicted by model and the values actually observed. It is the square root of the average of the square differences between the predicted and actual values. RMSE is used to evaluate the performance of a regression models, and the lower this value, the better the model's predictions are. Mean squared error, also known as MSE, is a common performance metric used to evaluate the accuracy of a model's prediction. It is the average of the square differences between the predicted values and the actual values. The lower this value is, indicates that the model is making more accurate predictions. We will also review Big old notation, which is a mathematical notation used to describe the growth rate of a algorithm's time or space complexity as the size of its input increases. It provides an upper bound on the growth rate of the running time or memory usage on an algorithm, allowing us to compare the efficiency of different algorithms. We won't go into detail on algorithm runtime, however, note that linear regression is expensive, where O of NP squared is for multiplication, and O of P cubed is for matrix inverse within the calculation of the model weights W. But there are also fast methods, such as using SPD or other online algorithms that we won't get into in this lecture. So here we have a model of how to run a linear regression model. The first line creates a linear regression object called RGR using the linear regression class from scikit-learn library. The second line fits the model using the fit method. It takes in two arguments, x and y, which represent the independent variables and the dependent variable respectively. The fit method trains the model using the data and finds the optimal weights for the independent variables. The next few lines simply create a scatter plot of the data and plot the regression line on top of it. The plot is created using the scatter method of the AX object, and the regression line is plotted using the plot method. The X2 variable represents a range of values from 0 to 3, and the regression line is plotted using the formula Y2 equals to rgr.coif underscore times X2 plus rgr.intercept, which gives the coefficients of the independent variables, i.e. the slopes of the regression line, and the intercept underscore gives the intercept of the regression line, also known as the y-intercept. So the final line prints out the coefficients and their intercept of the regression line. 
And we see here, we plot the regression line against the spread plot of 2D values. Here we also fit the scatter plot using linear algebra. The first line creates a new variable called x with bias, which is a 2D array with the same number of rows as x and two columns. The first column is a column of ones and the second column is a copy of x. This is done so that we can include a bias term in our linear regression model. The b variable is calculated using the closed form solution, also known as the normal equation for linear regression. The calculation involves taking the dot product of the transposed x with bias matrix and the x with bias dot t, and the x with bias variable, followed by the inverse of this product, and finally taking the dot product of the result with x with bias dot t and y. The y hat variable represents the predicted values of y, which is calculated by taking the dot product of x with bias and b. The scatter plot of AX object is created to create a scatter plot of the data as seen before. The plot method is used to plot the predicted values of Y hat on top of the scatter plot. Now we will review things that we should always consider when training machine learning models, such as multicollinearity, which is a concept where multiple features are correlated with each other. Here we list methods in which to uncover multicollinearity, such as using correlation matrix, using PCA, or partial least squares regression. We should also be aware of overfitting where our model is generalizing poorly due to high variance. So in summary, a linear regression model finds a set of weights defining a linear function from input features to the output value. Some implementations include ordinary least squares or standard linear regression. Now the question is, how many features do we assign weights to? Well, by default, linear regression will pick a non-zero weight to each feature if this makes any difference on the training data set. But often this makes it more brittle so in other words, it doesn't generalize to data outside the training set. This motivates ways of changing the function we are optimizing, and this process is also known as regularization. So sparse models, such as adding a penalty based on L1 lasso regression, has an objective to minimize the cost function by finding the optimal values for the coefficients W. The result of this optimization is a sparse model where some coefficients are exactly equal to zero, indicating that the corresponding features are not contributing to the prediction. So the following equation shows that x of i is the predicted value of the i sample, y i is the actual value of the i sample, and n is the number of samples. Wj is the jth coefficient of the model, and lambda is a regularization parameter that controls the amount of shrinkage of the coefficients. So now the objective of the L2 regression is to minimize the cost function by finding the optimal values of the coefficients W. The results of this optimization is a model with smaller coefficients, which makes the model simpler and less prone to overfitting. So in summary, lasso and ridge regression are two types of regularized linear regression that add a penalty term to the cost function to prevent overfitting. The difference between them lies in the type of penalty term used. So in general, lasso is more suitable for cases where there are many features and only a few of them are relevant to the predicting, while ridge is more suitable for cases where all the features are important, but some of them may have high correlations. The choice between lasso and ridge regression depends on the specific problem and the nature of the data. Elastic net is a hybrid of lasso and ridge regression that combines the penalties of both methods. It adds a penalty term to the cost function that is a combination of the L1 penalty used by lasso and the L2 penalty used by ridge. Here, alpha is a mixing parameter that controls the balance between the L1 and L2 penalties. The elastic net is a flexible method that can provide a trade-off between the sparse models generated by lasso and the dense models generated by ridge. The choice of alpha allows to control the balance between the two penalties. For linear regression, we summarize three techniques to reduce overfitting by using lasso, ridge, and elastic net. 
Later, we will see how to optimize the size of the penalty terms. So in summary, a linear regression is a supervised machine learning model that finds weights that best fit a linear model to a training set while also minimizing the mean squared error. As seen, various regularization strategies can be used to reduce overfitting and make the model more robust. Now we will be learning about another supervised learning algorithm known as logistic regression. To recap, Classifiers generally pick between two classes, either true or false. Now the question to ask is, could we use linear regression to build a function to map inputs to two values? And the answer is, of course, the range of values of a linear function is infinite, so we want to map it in a way that approximates a step function. Here, we model Boolean step versus linear versus logistic functions. Note that the zero to one step function and how sigmoid with different coefficients can approximate this more and more tightly. So how does this work? Well, training finds the weights that minimize the cost function via gradient descent, where the goal is to find the set of parameters, also known as weights. While the prediction uses these weights plus the features on some new instances to make a prediction on the instance. And of course, We'll start with prediction because they will also be used as part of the training. The sigmoid function seen here maps any real value number to a value between 0 and 1. So if the output of the sigmoid function is greater than or equal to 0 0.5, it is interpreted as the predicted class being positive. And if it is less than 0 0.5, it is interpreted as the predicted class being negative, also known as false. This approach is commonly used in binary classification problems where the goal is to predict one or two classes. The threshold of 0 0.5 is used to make a decision between the two classes, and it can be adjusted depending on the specific problem and the desired balance between false positive and false negative errors. But it is even better to take into consideration probabilistic predictions where probability estimates can be turned into prediction based on the threshold. For instance, predicted a y hat is zero if the probability estimate is less than 0 0.5, or one if the probability estimate is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. Logistic regression is trained using log cost to measure the error between our probabilistic estimate and the training label. By using the law of cost, the objective of the optimization algorithm becomes finding the set of weights that minimize the logarithmic difference between the predicted and actual class labels, which helps ensure that the optimization algorithm converges to a better solution and avoids getting trapped in a local minima. We should also note that gradient descent is an optimization algorithm used to minimize a cost function in machine learning and deep learning. The goal of the gradient descent is to find a set of parameters, also known as weights, that minimize the cost function. So how do we train logistic regression? So the log cost estimates the mean response given the data is binomial trial. In other words, it gives a probability of success. The training instance's average is calculated with the variables xi, which is a feature vector of the ith instance in the training data, yi, which is a tree class label of 0, 1 for the ith instance in the training data. And n is the number of instances in the training data. Log is the natural logarithm. And the summation is the sum over all instances in the training data. So the goal here, again, is to find the set of parameters that minimize the negative log likelihood. This can be achieved using optimization algorithms such as gradient descent, which is iteratively updates the parameters in the direction of the negative gradient until it converges. So we would next minimize the cost function via gradient descent, which we will discuss in the next submodule. Meanwhile, let's see how to apply logistic regression modeling via Python. So to use scikit, the first thing we have to do is import some data with labels. Here's one that is built into scikit about wines that has things like the level of magnesium. The data, also known as features, is in the table to the left, 
The labels, for example, 0, 1, and 2 are in the y vector to the right. As with other classifiers in scikit, the first thing we do is create the classifier logistic regression. Then we call fit method with the training data and class labels. At this point, the classifier is trained and then we use it to predict the test data. On the slide, we compare the predictions against the correct labels for testing. And we note that the accuracy here is quite high with a value of 96.3%. So in summary, logistic regression is a variation of regression based on the sigmoid function that is used for classification in which it estimates the probability that the instance belongs to a class, which re also requires regularization of parameters. In conclusion, we have learned about two popular machine learning algorithms, where linear regression is used to predict the value of a variable based on the value of another variable. And logistic regression is a linear model that predicts a classification of an instance. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you.